Hey professionals, over the last few years, Notion has been emerging as the go-to productivity tool that helps professionals get more done without sacrificing creativity. But most creative professionals start out with disjointed databases, tens of thousands of tools to consolidate, and sheer overwhelm at options available. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the five key things you need to know to effectively utilize and adopt Notion into your video production company. And by just making a few simple tweaks to your processes, you can create a system of organization that doesn't sacrifice sacrifice your creativity. Now, before we can dive into Notion and what it exactly is, it's important you understand why you need a tool like Notion in the first place, so you can make sure you're focusing on what's going to help you. And so the first thing we really need to understand is that as a creative professional, your brain is your most valuable asset. It is constantly at work, thinking and creating. And on top of this, the energy demands of creativity are absolutely significant. Whether it's editing, filming, or anything in between, your brain becomes physically exhausted thinking through those processes. But that's not the only challenge. When you become a business owner or a freelancer, you also take on a huge number of responsibilities that drain energy from your brain. Deadlines to remember, tasks to complete by the end of the day, meeting notes to consolidate to a project. So it's this amalgamation of things that really ends up heating up. We end up having this war of attrition between your brain and your responsibilities. And it's a game of whether your brain can outlast your business day in, day out. And this is obviously an extremely unsustainable way and why so many creative professionals have reached burnout early in their careers. So the concept of working memory was introduced by psychologist George A. Miller and is relevant here. Miller found that humans can hold about five to nine units of information at any given time. These units Units can really vary in size and can include details from micro to macro, so anything from due dates, shot lists, project types, file locations, or even just transition names in your software. Remembering these details is not only crucial, but energetically taxing. The more units of information we try to hold in our brain, the more energy we waste and the quicker we run out of it. So the reason Notion has taken the creative professional world by storm is that it does a lot of these energetically taxing tasks we consider boring, but essential. Notion is great at organizing deadlines, automagically consolidating meeting notes to projects, showing you what's happening and what's coming up in months in advance. By using Notion as your second brain, you can conserve energy so you can instead focus on what really matters, producing compelling creative content. Let's dive into how Notion actually works so we can begin designing your second brain. So let's go over what Notion's really good at doing. Notion is a single space where you can think, write and plan. It allows you to capture thoughts, manage projects, or even run an entire company, which is exactly what I use it for. And what's even best is that all of this is super easy to customize so you can make this work to exactly your needs, which is critical since you are a creative professional, we all have vastly different ways of getting work done. And you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with what I currently have? I use notes for notes, I have a calendar for due dates, docs for writing, spreadsheets for shot lists, and well, yes, that works, we end up wasting a lot of time and energy all over again, just remembering where they're stored, where is all this information and consolidating it together when we actually go to do the work. It takes just one missing item and your day really starts to become unproductive. So Notion takes all these softwares and functionalities and combines it into the one tool so you never lose anything again. Without further ado, let's actually just get in there and start creating something. So to get started with Notion, you can create a blank Notion page or start with a template. You can then add these things called blocks to your page, which can be anything from headings, titles, bullet points, images, embedded YouTube videos, and more. They're easy to modify and move around by dragging and dropping, and they will serve an important part in helping you stay creative while organized, which we'll come back to later. Now, the next feature I'm about to cover gets a bit more complicated or overwhelming. I'm still going to share it with you as I think it's important you know what Notion is capable of, but then at the end of the video, I'll give you an easier way to get started. And so what I'm talking about is Notion's database system. Databases allow you to organize data, but not just in these boring Excel looking like tables, you're able to change the layouts. So here's my YouTube video database. It's got all the data I need to organize my YouTube videos from due dates, topics, what stage of process they're in. But right now, this isn't very helpful for us. The data is in this big maze of words. So thankfully, Notion makes it really easy to change the layout. If you want to see a thumbnail layout, no problem. What about a calendar view showing a video's published date with the stage the video is at? super easy to set up. Now you may be thinking, this is all really cool, but how does this actually help me? 
And this will become clear to you when we combine blocks and databases together. And so the way you wanna use this is by using the database section to store the data you wanna compare one video project to another. So this usually looks like video stage. Are we writing the script or editing it? Due date, client, who's working on it? anything else you'd want to be able to compare creative projects by. The database is rigid and it does this for you so it's easier to organize your video projects however you need. The freeform page on the other hand is what allows you to be creative. Here you can add blocks to help support you with your creative work. So a text block for script, to-do list for shot list. My personal favorite is the call out block to give me easy reminders on things I often forget. And if you're really smart, many people create templated layouts. So you can press one button and you basically just get this whole friendly reminder of how you can create your next project. So databases become your tool for organization and blocks become your tool for creativity. And together you have creativity organized. Now you may be thinking, holy shit, that's a lot to take in. I don't even know how to get started. And I completely understand that sentiment. It's exactly what happened to me when I started using Notion about three years ago. So I'm gonna show you how to overcome this overwhelm with the Notion template that's a lot easier to get started. So now is a good time to download Notion if you haven't already. I have an affiliate link below, which would really help me out. You don't have to spend any money right now, but if you do use the link and you did upgrade later, it would be no additional cost to you. And it really does help me build more videos like this. While Notion is downloading, let's talk through a concept that's gonna help us get over your overwhelm. Now, when you think of overwhelm, you're probably very familiar with the feeling, right? But are you familiar with what exactly causes it? Overwhelm is caused when you have limited time, but unlimited options to choose from. And our options could include updating our new showreel, building a website, creating content to market ourselves, or even building a Notion template to speed up our workflows. So to be able to effectively choose what to work on, we need time and organization. Thankfully, early in my career, I was introduced to this incredible concept from Jonathan Stark. He called it Work on Business Thursdays. It's simple and it's two steps. First, you create a recurring time block in your calendar that goes for the entire day called busy. Next, we need to find a way to prioritize these tasks. So now we're going to open up Notion and build a priority list on things we can work on our company to improve our life. So when you first open up Notion, you should get something that looks like this. Now we're gonna do one of the most important steps first, which is turning this into dark mode because we are video editors and we live in caves. So to do this, we simply go to settings, go to my settings and change this to dark. And just like that, we are now back in our natural habitat of darkness and despair. The next thing is to create the title for this database page we're creating. So in here, I'm just gonna call this work on business Thursdays. Following this, I also like to actually add a little cover, which you can find right here, just to really set the mood of what I'm doing. I am a visual person, so too many words can kind of overwhelm me. This is just one of those things that really helps me psychologically use these effectively. So in here, I'm just gonna type in productivity. Following this, I'm actually gonna start populating this page with things we wanna work on. When you finish writing out everything you wanna do, you're probably gonna end up with something that looks like this. Now, while this is useful, it's pretty overwhelming. Not everything is visually broken up into their digestible packets of information. Now I'm gonna show you a few ways we can modify these blocks to be something that's more easier to read and organize. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is headings. To do this, we just click on this little six dots here and we're gonna change this into a heading two. And a heading two is perfectly normal and what a lot of people do, but I found something that was slightly more useful, which was turning this heading two into a toggle heading two. And what this is going to do is allow us to basically put everything into a toggle menu. So what I'm gonna go through here now is just turning all these headings into toggable heading twos. Now that that's complete, you can see here, we've really been able to condense the information into a much more easier to look at thing. So we're not getting overwhelmed with just a whole bunch of information that we don't need to read or understand right now, keeping it all contained and relevant to our immediate desires, which is always great. Now there's a couple other blocks I really like to add here that gives this a lot more functionality and is easier to use. And the first one is creating a table of contents. So now this simply becomes my priority list and it's very easy to look at. So I can see here, there's like market analysis followed by updating my portfolio, followed by getting some networking and partnerships happening. That's a pretty good list, but maybe we might be under a lot of financial stress. We're going, man, I don't know where my money's at. I need to know where it's coming from and where it's going. So we might decide to make financial planning a priority. To do this, all we have to do is click on these little dots and drag it to the top. 
Easy as that. You'll see automatically the table of contents updates as well. So we've got this really easy list, easy to read over, easy to dive deep into something. But there's one more thing I like adding to this, and that is just deciding not to work on it. So sometimes we get really excited when we come up with these ideas, but sometimes they're not worth doing. So to do this, I will simply make a new heading, heading one, and I'm just gonna call this not working on it. And then I am a visual person, so I'm gonna give this a nice little red background just to visually let it sink in. And in here, we might be going at the end of the day, you know what, I've already got a fantastic portfolio. It doesn't need an update right now. Great, I'll just put it up down here and then not working on it. And so by basically giving ourselves a not working on a tab and being able to visually see it, for some reason it does clear up my brain. So I stop thinking about that completely. It saves a lot of energy and gives me a lot of focus just to work on what I should be actually working on. If you've been following along, you now have an effective priority list. It's easy to move items up or down to prioritize what you're going to work on next. But we're not done here. This is a DaVinci Resolve channel first, so I'm going to show you how I use one quick little trick to seamlessly integrate Notion databases to your Resolve projects. And just like with docs, spreadsheets, calendars, you need to be able to centralize all your work as much as possible to save time finding information so you can ultimately save more energy. Now, unfortunately, Notion isn't a video editor and I feel stupid saying that but it is worth pointing out because it can be easy to repeat the mistakes and resolve that Notion had already solved. So for instance you might have titles to reference the video project but if you work on two similar titled videos it's going to be really easy for you to cross contaminate information and edits and then everything becomes a mess as you try to apply the wrong information to video projects. So that's why it's essential to start serializing your video projects and this doesn't have to be hard. For instance, this whole YouTube video you're watching right now has a serial number OL underscore P0046.2. And the first step to serializing is to group videos into buckets. Buckets is basically who is this video serving? So that's usually a customer or yourself. So the OL for this YouTube video stands for my name, Awesome Lord. If you had a client named Dancing Cactus, their client code would be DC. And the reason we wanna be using these client codes is really it's how we end up organizing videos in their final deliverabilities. All the final outputs usually get put in a central folder based on each client that is then shared with the client. So by using the client code first, it allows us to more easily organize the final export. Moving on from that is the project number. And it's specifically a project number as we want it referencing resolved projects instead of individual videos because this method makes it easier for you to organize work into batch projects. If you've been doing video work long enough, you know that producing multiple videos in one session is much more productive and much more profitable in the long run. So I'm gonna run through an example of why we do this instead of the video project numbers. So if we have a project with four videos, if we were to give each video their own code, for example, V underscore 001, then the next one's V underscore 002, all the way down to video number four, it becomes easy to lose video project files. Versus if you were to do the other way, which is you have one project code, you have one central location for storing all your assets and resolve project files. All four videos are contained in a singular folder and project file. This ultimately saves you a lot of space and time because just everything's there, you just put it there and it's done. You don't have to do all the sort of micromanaging of assets. It basically means you're getting the best of both worlds. But there's still one more number we need to cover, which is that little decimal point you saw at the end of my serial. And this does represent each video. And you use this number to quickly link the video in the database to the timeline in the Resolve project file. And so once you start adopting this serialization number, it becomes really streamlined and really easy to keep organized between your videos and your projects. So now you know how to use Notion to get more work done, but maybe you're thinking, how do I get this database filled with high paying projects? Well, then you should definitely check out this video here where I show you how I attracted high paying work by making a simple yet crucial adjustment in the way I charged for my work. So until then, I will all catch <laughs> so until then I will catch you all around.